Hey guys, welcome to the Mr. Bill Poker Vlog. Uh, not a fun vlog this week. I'm going to talk about something that I am not very happy about. Have you guys ever done anything just incredibly stupid? Um, something that embarrasses yourself or embarrasses the family or just something that is so out of character. And I want to talk about something that I did this week that is simply out of character. I simply, I lost my mind. I don't know what I was doing, um, but is not very fun. And again, I'm just embarrassed. It's actually quite appropriate that it happened this week because I'm going to put this vlog out on Good Friday. And of course, I would like to have some grace uh, from you guys and from the people affected by my actions. And uh, just like God has shown us great mercy and grace. Um, I need a little bit of that from you guys this week. So I was in Ohio this weekend uh, working on my mom's house and oh, there a lot of pressure and stress for <laughs> trying to get that all done. And I didn't get to play poker this weekend. So I got back home on uh, Monday morning at 2.30 a.m. Uh, since I didn't get to play with this weekend, then I asked my wife, is it okay if I go down and play at the local club, uh, Line Shack, my favorite club to play at. In fact, the only one I play at other than playing at casinos. She said that would be fine. So off to Line Shack, I went on Monday evening after my work was finished. So I played in the tournament. I actually did very well in the tournament. You'll find that out here in a little bit. I am, um, and played in the cash games, didn't do as well there, but it was a Financially, it was a fine night. Uh, my actions had nothing to do with poker. They had to do with something else. So we got done about two o'clock in the morning, went out to my car, started backing out my car the wrong way, and I bumped the guy next to me. Um, I put it back and forward. I then went the other way, put it in reverse, and I pulled up next to his car to see if there was any damage. I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, and I didn't think there was anything wrong, so I left. Immediately upon leaving, I regretted my decision, thinking I should just go back there and tell the guy, hey, I bumped your car. If there's any damage, I will take care of it. But I didn't. Um, I didn't take care of my responsibility. And it's about a 50 minute drive from the club to my home and the entire way home, I just know that I did the wrong thing. Maybe I should call the owner and let him know, hey, if there's any problem, um, then to let him let me know and I'll take care of it. But my pride wouldn't let me do that. Now I know that Line Check has cameras everywhere. They're gonna know if there was a problem that I was the one who did it and I was kind of expecting a call from one of the owners if there was a problem. And sure enough, I got a call from uh, one of the owners, Dick, on my way home, I was almost home, and I knew it exactly what it was about. Uh, I told him I screwed up. Um, I, I have never done this before. I don't know why I didn't just take care of the uh, issue at the time that it happened, but I didn't. And I told Dick, I was, I apologized profusely. I told him I would absolutely take care of it. I didn't know that there was damage. It turned out there was damage to the guy's car and he does need it to be repaired. Um, I got his number and I texted him numerous times and we're communicating. Um, he was actually great. We'll talk about that in a second. So why did I do that? I have no idea. So out of character for me. Um, I've never done anything like that before. I certainly hope I'll never do it again. Um, Man, it causes all sorts of other problems when you simply don't take care of your responsibilities. Uh, it's it's lying. It really is lying. And anytime you lie, it just heaps upon itself. And I can tell you, in this particular case, I didn't sleep that night. Uh, I felt horrible. I now have to suffer the consequences of the guys at the club maybe not trusting me. I certainly hope you guys will give me another chance. Uh, again, that's certainly out of character for me. What I really don't understand about my actions is how could I do that to people who are, I consider my friends. Uh, some of them are just acquaintances, but some are friends. I don't know whose car that was. Uh, I am just completely um, embarrassed by my actions. I certainly want to apologize to the guy whose car was, his name is Daniel. I actually don't know Daniel. Um, he was awesome though. I mean, talk about your grace. He has absolutely shown grace to me. Um, he just said, hey man, it's no big deal. Let's just get it taken care of. And I am certainly going to do that. Daniel, I appreciate your um, willingness to forgive me. 
uh, I, again, uh, to Dick and Phil and the other guys at Line Check, all the dealers especially, I am just profoundly sorry. Um, you guys know me. It's, it's, it's completely out of my character, and I, <laughs> there's really no excuse. I've been very, very much under stress lately, taking care of my mom and assisted living and doing some other stuff, but that is, again, no excuse. This has comes down to um, a character issue, and I was simply flawed this time. And um, again, I, I ask for forgiveness, and I will never do that again. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get to what actually happened in the poker at uh, Lion Shack on Monday night's tournament. All right, I didn't get to play in this one. Sure. You What's want? your name? Sherry. Sherry? Sherry, this is Sherry. Sherry, you, you might get on my blog now. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. So I didn't get to play poker this weekend, so it is Monday. I'm playing at the Lion Shack uh, Monday tournament. So let's go, Mr. Bill. First break at the Lion Shack Monday tournament. I started with 7,000 chips. First break, I had 22,000. I did the $20 add on for 4,000, so I got 26,000. That's a pretty good start. So I'm absolutely dominating the table. Blinds are 300, 600. I have King of Clubs, Six of Hearts in middle position, too. Got a little cocky. I limped in, and then the button, small blind, and the big blind. Work. I actually don't mind playing this if I think I'm better than the other players, but it shouldn't be a limp. It should be a raise, and then I get out any of the junk hands. So anyhow, on the flop, 2,400 in the pot. It comes ace of clubs, six of clubs, nine of hearts. It checked around to the button, who bets 1,200. The other guys fold, and I tank for quite some time. I think I'm way better than this player. Uh, I've got a backdoor flush draw. Uh, I've got a little piece. So I think I'll peel one off. So the turn with 4,800 in the pot, bingo bongo, comes the king of diamonds. I check to him. He bets 3,000 with 9,500 behind. I shove all in, and he snap calls. He has a six two pair to my king six two pair uh-oh the river 29,800 in the pot comes another nine he wins the pot but he thinks he chops yeah, no, so he says oh chop. yeah i'll chop it if you want to but it wasn't a chop no, if lost. you want to that was really only my blemish in the first few levels was just this one hand otherwise i was absolutely crushing the table Race, race. Well, it's funny. Five thousand. Final table, I think we got 10 left, paying five. Uh, got somebody in the last man. Yeah. I have 41, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, 41. That just plays itself. <laughs> we're, still at, we're still at six. We're having a little okay. trouble knocking out the uh, bubble. Yeah. <laughs> Five left, we're in the money. Here we go. There's everybody. Five left. There was a limper. Four and eight. There was a limper. Another limper. I'm in the big blind. I have eight screen blinds. Nice job. The first limper had pocket aces. Ace queen, what do you have left? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I think I have him covered, though. Yeah, you do. 
Uh, I can't get out go with ice queen of diamonds. <laughs> tricky, tricky. Hey, limp in with those suckers. So we get down to three players. There's a little bit of a talk about a chop. First place is 960, second place is 7, third place is 480. I don't know, chop value is just less than seven. We're not even second place money. I didn't come to chop, I came to win. So I say no. No guts, no glory, man. Go for the win, that's what I say. Of course, I will chop if it's advantageous to me. I just didn't think it was in this particular case. So the very first hand with three players, under the gun, I get ace of diamonds, six of diamonds with 120K, uh, I shove, and my old buddy Les makes the call with king of spades queen of hearts he has me covered by a little bit and the board comes eight jack three four queen ugh and i am out of the tournament i simply can't beat less less is unbeatable so immediately after me going out they made a deal for a chop like literally 15 seconds later so they chopped first and second place money i ended up getting uh 40 for the tournament plus some last man money plus some other money uh got over 600 dollars for the 80 dollar tournament so it still wasn't so bad and of course i was happy with my decision on the in the tournament uh hey get your money in the best you can and if the variance beats you then it beats you that's okay i'm just happy i got my money in good all right, so I went to play in the cash game and some of the old cast of characters, namely Les, was there and uh, played these couple of hands. So I started off well, I bought in for 300. It's a 1-3 game with one hand of Omaha per round. I was up to $360. I was on the button with pocket jacks. There are three limpers to me. I make it 20. Less under the gun calls and the under the gun plus one calls. And the flop with 73 in the pot comes 10, 8, 8. Uh, Les donks into me for $50. The other guy folds. I raise it up to 115. It comes back to him and he makes the call. So the turn with 303 in the pot and Les only having $50 left is a second 10. <laughs> the worst card in the world. Uh, he goes all in for $50. Jeez, I'm, it's $50 to win 350. It's seven to one. Could he be doing this with an ace? I doubt it. I'm almost always beat, but for $50, I'm not folding. I make the call. The river's a nine. He has ace 10. Yay, yay for less. I couldn't beat the guy all night long, so I don't know why it would be any different in the cash game. So when I got to the table, there was a really young, aggressive guy there. He had a relatively big stack for a 1-3 game. He had like $700. Uh, he seemed to be playing every pot. He was raising all the time. So I fought back a number of times and was doing pretty good against him. He started losing and you could tell he was running out of patience and he was trying to get it all in there. He was anxious to get the money in. So at this point in the game, I was in for $600. I only had 180 left, so down 420, not very happy. Uh, I'm under the gun with pocket tens. Uh, again, $180. I limp, and the reason I do is because it's been an aggressive game. I think the young guy will, will raise it up. Um, anyhow, I limp, there's a caller, and the middle position one, which is the young guy, rakes a 20. There's a caller, comes back around to me. I shovel in for 110, comes to, back to him, and he tank calls and everybody else folds. So there's 383 in the pot. I've got him kind of in bad shape. He has ace 10 and I have pocket tens. The board runs out seven, seven, nine, six, gives him some chop outs, jack. And I win that one and double up. I really didn't record very many hands. I'm getting a little bit burnt out on the recording of hands, so I didn't do all that. There was a couple of bluffs, a couple of regular plays. Ended up losing about $200. Uh, I had won over 500 in the tournament, so ended up plus over $300 for the uh, day. So a couple of bits of news here for you guys. I'm very, very excited about a potential collaboration with a big name training site. Uh, I'm going to take some of their training before I will agree to collaborate with them, but I'm pretty excited about it. It's a big name. You guys will recognize it. Um, they're giving my son and I free training, and we're going to take the class. And if we think that it's good training, then I will promote them and uh, tell you guys about the training classes too.
and the Mr. Bill meetup game, which is going very, very slow. We found another venue. I think it's going to work out. I just haven't had time to talk with the owner yet to set a date, but I'm thinking it's going to be in May. So I am filming this on Good Friday, so happy Easter, guys. Uh, just realize how incredibly blessed you are. Realize that you can accept the gift of grace and mercy uh, given by God through Jesus. Um, free gift. And as I said earlier, uh, grant grace to those who need it. I am one of those this week for my incredibly uh, poor decision making. Uh, I would appreciate that. So thank you guys for watching and subscribing and commenting. I really appreciate it. Uh, starting next week, we're going to get back to some just more hardcore poker hands and discussion of strategy. Hopefully none of this other stuff. So thank you guys very much. Have a great blessed week. Happy Easter. And we'll see you all again next time. Bye.